Have a seat. Gary Moore, född och uppvuxen i Belfast men flyttade tidigt till Dublin där han snabbt gjorde sig en musikkarriär som gitarr under barn. I'm just telling the where audience where you came from, yeah. where you grew up. You grew up in Belfast, moved yeah, to I Dublin. Never grew up, yeah, live. <laughs> <laughs> you never grew up. No. no, I'm sorry. Sorry to hear that. But you started off early to play the guitar. Yeah, when I was ten. Really early. When did you actually meet the instrument the first time, and what did you play? Uh, I met. Uh, well, I started on the guitar through my father, who was a promoter in Northern Ireland, and he had a friend who had a big acoustic guitar, and he was into like the Shadows and all that stuff. So the first tune I ever played was uh, "Wonderful Land" by the Shadows. Gary spelar alltså "Wonderful Land" and "Shadows" låt första gången han som tioåring fick pröva en akustisk gitarr som hans farsa promotorn till handa höll. Um, you were 16 years when you when you started your first band Skid Row. Yeah, yeah. That's first quite time early. Yeah, I was 17. Your first time in Sweden when you were 17. Row, yeah. In the city, yeah. That's quite early. But uh, and when you were 18, you inherited a very nice guitar, the yeah. legendary Peter Green's guitar. Yeah, a little bit older maybe, but uh, yeah, because Peter Green was a big hero of mine, and I met him when I was with Skid Row, and. Uh, he kind of took me under his wing and okay. he let me have this legendary, legendary guitar that he played uh, Albatross. And this is the not the one? No, it, it looks very similar, <laughs> but it's not here today, no. It's the same model? Yeah, yeah. Les Paul. Uh, Peter Green, blueslegenden, uh, en uh, legend för många gitarrister och en stor idol för Gary, lät honom få uh, en uh, Gibson Les Paul from 1959. Did it mean a lot to you? Getting oh, to know yeah, Peter Green. Oh yeah, the guitar I always wanted. I'd seen him play it when I was 14, and I always yeah. dreamt about having a guitar like this. So yeah. when I got it, it was a big thrill. I yeah. used to take it everywhere with me. I wouldn't even leave it at home yeah. under the bed or anything. I'd have to like take it everywhere. It's like a teddy bear for other people. <laughs> the <laughs> guitar, you know. Teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> Nej, men uh, den här gitarren betyder mycket. Och Peter Green meant, meant a lot to you. Yeah, very much so. I was a big uh, fan of his ever since he replaced Eric Clapton in the Blues Breakers. Mm -hmm. um, with John Mayall and then, you know, I've followed his music ever since. So five years ago you made an album with Peter Green songs? Yeah, as a sort of a thank you to him and a uh, mm -hmm. celebration of his music. It's called Blues for Greeny. Yeah. So uh, you have uh, played with many of the big guys on the rock scene, on the blues yeah. scene. You've met Albert King, B.B. Yeah. King, all Albert those Collins, things. Albert Collins. Albert yeah. Collins. So, so w why did you uh, stay on the hard rock scene for such a long time before you returned to the blues? I don't know. I think it was just one of those things in the 80s. Uh, if you were a guitarist, that's kind of what you played, and mm -hmm. I didn't really feel that at home very much in that music. And I found myself playing blues when I was alone all the time towards the end of the 80s. And it was a message I got from that was to go back to playing the blues. I'm just going to translate a bit. Uh, Gary is ganska känd för sitt intresse för blues på senare år. Man har faktiskt väldigt väldigt många år, särskilt på 70-talet och 80-talet på hård rock scenen, men trivdes inte speciellt bra där utan ville hellre återvända till rötterna, Albert King, BB King, Albert Collins, hans stora hjältar. So you returned to the blues. Once on, in the 70s you were a part-time member, let's say that, of a great band called Thin Lizzy. Yeah, sure. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the legendary leader of Thin Lizzy was a friend of yours, Philip Lunot. Yeah. And he died tragically. In those days, almost everyone in the rock scene had their share of sex, drugs and rock and roll. Uh, have you had your share of that? <laughs> I've had your share. <laughs> you had my share as well? <laughs> okay. Why is it that, that people burn out themselves on the rock scene? I think it's very easy because uh, they get bored, you know, and they get into drugs and they get into whatever, alcohol, but... Uh, some people, it's not just luck. I think some people know when to stop and others, mm. it's like anything, some people go a little bit too far. So when, when, when did you come to the point you knew you had to stop? I never stopped. You never stopped? <laughs> <laughs> no, but but you was, survived, uh, didn't no, you? Yeah. Serious, seriously, uh, I was never into uh, drugs in that way. You know, no. I never got into hard drugs or anything. Not because I just did, I wasn't interested yeah. that much. I was, I think I was probably too scared I'd like them, you know. Mm -hmm. But I was also scared <laughs> when I saw what they were doing to my friends, you know. Yeah. So it was pretty obvious to me that it wasn't a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. so I away. Gary berättar om tiden på 70-talet när han var deltidsmedlem i Thin Lizzy. Phil Linnett som dog tragiskt på 80-talet bland annat. Säkert till följd av en del drogbruk. Gary försökte hålla sig undan från det. Mycket säger han beroende på att han förmodligen hade tyckt alldeles för mycket om det. Och det var ju kanske ett ganska bra skäl. Uh, so you went back to the roots, started to play the blues again. Yeah. Do you think the blues will survive through the next millennium? Oh, I think it's, it's a tradition. It's not like a, a music that relies on fashion. And I think yeah. uh, it depends if there are enough young musicians who want to carry on that tradition. Then it will survive 
as a live form. But uh, if not, I mean, the, we have a great library of music there from all the great artists, and that will always be there. And it's a very special kind of music because it's a very deep rooted music and it's not easy to play. A lot of people think because the notes are simple that it's very easy, but that's just the surface. There's a lot more to it than that. And, uh, you so, know, I, I would always support the blues personally because it's the music I love. Gary talar om sin kärlek till bluesen. Bluesen kommer definitivt att överleva som tradition i nästa årtusende. Thank you very much, Thank Gary. You. Thank you for coming. Thank you.